In this simulation, we explore the concept of centripetal forces. Centripetal force can be tricky. People learning about the subject often come to it with a lot of misconceptions. Uncovering and correcting these misconceptions can be hard work. Let's watch the bobsled turn. The bobsled is clearly moving. We can imagine a vector describing its velocity that is pointing out of the screen, toward us. Of course, we're moving with a bobsled to keep it in the frame. Seen from a fixed point on the side of the track, the velocity vector would appear to be constantly changing. Why is that? Is the speed of the bobsled changing? No. Its direction is changing. An object turns in a circle when its direction changes. Since a change in direction is a change in velocity, even if the speed doesn't change, it still counts as an acceleration. In this case, from the point of view of the bobsled operator, the sled is constantly accelerating leftward toward the inside of the track. When moving in a circle, we accelerate towards the center of that circle. Take a second to imagine the full circle of motion the bobsled is traversing and where the center of the circle would be. It would be off screen to the right, seen from our perspective. This is the direction in which the bobsled is accelerating. So now, we need to figure out why the bobsled is accelerating in that direction. Let's look at the forces acting on it. Two forces act on the bobsled. One is the normal, or contact force, acting upwards and rightward. The other is a gravitational force, acting downward. Neither of these points exactly rightward. However, if we look at the net force acting on the bobsled, we see something different. The upward component of the normal force is exactly balanced by the downward force of gravity. Only the horizontal component of the normal force remains in the net force calculation. When a force or force component or combination of forces points towards the center of the circle of motion, we call these forces centripetal. In other words, centripetal is not a type of force, it is a direction of a force. In this case, the horizontal component of the normal force is center pointing, so it is centripetal. A greater centripetal force is required if the acceleration is greater. More acceleration means greater rate of change of velocity. Under what conditions will the velocity change most rapidly? I'd say if the speed is higher, it is also changing by more. Let's check that out. Does the net force increase? Yes. If the turning radius is smaller, the velocity changes more quickly. The net force increases in this case as well. More mass means more force required for a given acceleration. So more mass leads to greater net force as well. The graph at the top left tells us about how the centripetal force varies with speed. Clearly, at higher speed, more center pointing force is required to change the direction of the velocity vector. The relationship you can see is parabolic. In fact, the centripetal force required depends on the square of the speed. The graph at the top right tells us about how centripetal force varies with the turn radius. As you can see, a tighter turn radius requires higher net force. This relationship is an inverse relationship. The force required is inversely proportional to turn radius. Did you notice that when you increase the speed, the bobsled moves upward higher on the track? Why does it do that? The track is strong enough that it will apply whatever reaction force it needs to turn the bobsled. At greater speeds, greater reaction force is applied. The normal force is this reaction force. Notice that it increases when the speed increases. When the normal force increases, both its horizontal component and its vertical components increase. If the vertical component now exceeds gravity, the bobsled accelerates upward. As a bobsled moves up the side of the track, the angle the normal force makes gets smaller. 
Now, the vertical component balances gravity again, even though the magnitude of the normal force overall is higher. In essence, the bobsled finds a new vertical equilibrium position. The bobsled is never in horizontal equilibrium. It is turning. The bobsled drivers can also shift their position within the sled to control more carefully the position of the sled. At the start of the sim, we asked, what keeps the bobsled on the track? A physicist might turn this question into a more direct one. What forces are acting on the bobsled and how do they affect its motion? Answer this question and you've got a solid understanding of centripetal force.